The last section of the chapter goes through integrated food webs. And this is essentially a coda on the rest of the material. What the authors say is that food webs blur the trophic position of each species in an ecosystem. And essentially, in this section, they want to make sure that we understand that the food webs and food chains that we diagram are an abstraction. And it doesn't necessarily, we shouldn't interpret reality based on the abstraction in and of itself. A lot of the trophic transfers that occur are really messy as far as categorizing them, but we can still categorize them to better understand the overall patterns. Now what the authors want to represent in this last section is really to abstract an ecosystem as a food chain is okay, but in reality there's a food web that's out there. And a lot of those interactions are very complicated and they can shift over time. A lot of the individual organisms cannot necessarily be directly assigned to one specific level on a food chain or in a food web. In addition, we haven't talked about these, but there are parasites, pathogens, and diseases that are trophically similar to predators in many respects, but are hard to classify. They also show the example of some of the symbioses that are there, thinking about mycorrhizal fungi and how hard it is to classify them and where you would put them directly in a plant-based or detritus-based trophic chain. So when you read that section, it's just to take a step back a little bit and think about more of the complexity out there and not necessarily to replace what we use as an abstraction for an ecosystem to simplify our understanding of, this, of the dynamics there with how an a system is actually put together.